Today we're going to have a look at the interference patterns formed within air wedges and how this can be used to measure very short distances. So in that last video on thin films, we learned that if we had a thin film, then the ray reflected off the top surface would interfere with the ray reflected off the bottom surface. And if we were to choose this thickness just right, these two rays would be in phase. And we get constructive interference and the surface of the film would appear bright. Now let's suppose that we can somehow control the film thickness. So it gets a little bit thicker over here and then a little thicker over here again. And we have a little bit of added thickness here. And let's suppose that that added thickness is a quarter of a wavelength. So there's one wavelength. This would be just a quarter of a wavelength in that extra thickness. Of course, we've got to add an extra quarter of a wavelength for that ray on the way in. And then we've got to add it again on the way out. So there'd be a quarter of a wavelength plus another quarter of a wavelength. In other words, you're going to add on a half of a wavelength of extra path there. In other words, the ray that comes in and goes through the film and bounces off is going to travel an extra half of a cycle. And that extra half a cycle is going to put these two rays out of phase. And if they're out of phase, this surface is going to appear dark. And then if we throw in an extra half of a cycle again, we'll be back in phase. So if we adjust by the same amount of thickness again, we'd be back to a bright surface here. So we'd get these very distinct bright and dark fringes. Now it's very hard to control the thickness of the film like this, but it turns out to be quite easy to do it in a gradual manner. So let's suppose we gradually increase the thickness. Then of course, right at this point, we're right at the correct thickness to get a bright band. So it would appear bright here. And then right here, it's right at the right thickness that you would get a dark band. And right here, just at the right thickness to get a bright band. So our bands would be more gradual now, but they'd shift from bright to dark. And you would know that every time you go from bright to dark, you're adding in an extra quarter of a wavelength to the thickness of the film. So as we look across the top of our film, it's going to be really bright here and then kind of gradually drop out to zero here, be very dark, and then it's going to gradually increase and be bright over here. And we would know that every time we got, say, another bright fringe, that the thickness must have increased by half of a wavelength. Every bright fringe, or we could count dark fringes just as well, there's going to be just as many of them. Every bright fringe corresponds to an increase of lambda over 2 in the thickness. So in other words, just by counting fringes, we're going to be able to measure thickness as a film. So an air wedge is a very simple apparatus. It consists of two plates of glass. They could be microscope slides. And then you need a source of monochromatic light. And typically you'd use a sodium vapor lamp, which has a wavelength of 589 nanometers. You insert the object you're trying to measure the width of on one side of the plate. So this is the width you're trying to measure. And you would find that if you looked at the top of the plate, there would be bright and dark bands. And right here where there's no thickness, you should get a dark band. So it would start out dark and then it would get bright and then you might see another dark band over here somewhere and then maybe another dark band over here and let's say one here as well. 
Now, of course, the thickness here where the plates touch each other is going to be zero. The thickness here at that first dark band is going to have to be equal to lambda over 2. But that's the lambda inside the film, which in this case is air. So in, in this particular case, the lambda of the film would be that 589 nanometers. Then, of course, each time we get another dark fringe, we're increasing the thickness here by another half a wavelength. So the thickness here would be a full wavelength. And the thickness here, we would add another half a wavelength again, so we'd get 3 lambda over 2. But that's the wavelength inside the film. So in this particular case, keep in mind that that lambda of the film is lambda in air. Our film is made of air. So it's going to be that 589 nanometers. So then the thickness, so then the thickness at this end of the plates, or the width, is going to equal 3 times lambda, 589 nanometers, divided by 2. Work that out, and you should get 884 nanometers as the width of that little object. So we can use this air wedge to find out the width of objects. Let's try an example. Pause the video, try the question, come back for the answer. So the first thing we need to do is just count up the number of, in this case, dark fringes. So uh, we'll consider this one the zeroth one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And every time we go from one to the next, that increases the, that means the thickness of the air wedge must have increased by half a wavelength. So if we take eight times lambda over two, that should be equal to the thickness of the human hair. And if we assume the, and if we were to assume, say, that the And if we were to assume to say that the hair was right here at the edge, that would not quite at the next dark fringe. We should probably add on an extra quarter of a wavelength just to make a better estimate. So we'd get a thickness there. of 4.25 lambda or 4.25 times 600 nanometers. Giving a thickness of 25.50 nanometers or we might write that as 2. Point, or we might write that as about 2.6 times 10 to the minus 6 meters or 2.6 micrometers for the thickness of our hair. We can summarize this video very quickly simply by saying that every dark fringe on an air wedge surface, or simply on an air wedge, corresponds to an increase in thickness by half the wavelength of the light used. So please take the time to like videos, to make comments, to ask questions, become a subscriber, sign up for notifications, Become a member or a Patreon. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.